didn't say a word, right? And then what happened is I quickly realized as a young man that being a good provider was not the most important thing. You see, I've been in this town now for almost 25 years, and this is what I've noticed is when people lose their health, right, they don't know how to get it back, and when they have their health, they don't know how to keep it. I want you to think about that for a minute. 25 years, when people lose their health, they don't know how to get it back, and when they have their health, they don't know how to keep it. Right? So as we go along through this here together tonight, right, I want to just lay the foundation so you understand that before we just dig really deep, dive into this nutrition part of it, which is really important, that there's other things that you need to know first, and if you don't know those things first, then you're not going anywhere because the foundation is going to be weak, and then it's going to be hard for you to have the big picture. And the first thing that I want to share with you tonight is you first need to know that God wants you to be healthy. And if you don't know that to begin with, then what happened is people would say something like, hey, Dr. jean Guy, right? Heart disease run in my family. Dr. jean Guy, cancer runs in my family. Dr. jean Guy, depression runs in my family. Dr. jean Guy, you know, this is my depression. This is my fibromyalgia. This is my problems, right? People like to just claim their disease. That's mine. It's mine, right? It's my pain. It's mine. And what happened is if you claim your disease or if you don't believe that God wants you to be healthy, then you're going to be in trouble right out of the gate, right? So I want to be building this foundation first. What I want you to know before we, we go real deep into this nutrition portion, which I promise you we will do, is I want to show you a little bit about what the scripture says about God wanting you to be healthy. Is that okay with you? Right? So we're going to start with this here and see how that, see where this is leading us. Right? Number one here it says in Jeremiah 30, just so you know, you don't have like, I'm going to go so fast that you won't have time to write it down, just so you know. But it will come to a point where you can get your little phone out and you can zoom in on that, on that beautiful QR code and I'm going to send them all to you. Is that okay? I mean, you can write them down if you want to, but you really don't have to. If you know how to zoom in on a QR code, then you're going to be good to go. Is that okay? As soon as you do that, then we'll send, that, we'll send those all to you. Fair enough? Is that good? So you don't have to write down anything because you would be like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I won't be able to keep up. Right? Okay. Let's see here if this technology works. I'd rather look at this here if that, if that works. Maybe it's not going to work. But Okay. So here it says, Jeremiah 30, it says, but I will, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. So that's number one. Number two, it says in Psalm 147, it says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Yes? Say yes. Okay, good. Next one here it says in Psalm 103, it says who forgives all your sin and heals all your disease. How's that sound? Pretty good. You like it? Here it says Isaiah 53, it says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Yes? Okay. Here's the next one in 1 Peter. This is a repeat from the Old Testament. It says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, right? So that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, he has been healed. This next one here, it says in 1 Chronicle. It says, so he died in good old age. Now they're talking about David, right? They're like, David, he died in good old age, full of days, and then riches and honor. And then Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. This next one, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to arm you. Plans to give you hope and future. How does that sound? Does that sound like pretty positive? Does that sound like... He wants to take care of you. He wants to take care of like making sure that you're going to be healthy. That if you were to have a disease of some sort that, you know, he could take care of that. How many of you here believe that the great physician is like upstairs? Yes. Lots of people say that, but yet the action doesn't line up with that, right? Hopefully we can strengthen that tonight. 
This next one here it says in 3 John, which is going to be, I believe, the last one. It says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. So God wants you to be healthy and he wants your soul to prosper. How does that sound? Good? Do you like that? Right? First, we need to establish that God wants you to be healthy because if you don't know that, then you're in trouble. If you know that God wants you to be healthy, then this is the major premise. This is the foundation and then if you have a strong foundation, then everything's going to go well for you thereafter. So that's where we start. So now I want to show you those famous three circles. Right? I love the three circles. I've been working on the three circles for a long time. We could have like multiple classes on those three circles. We're going to touch on a little bit. I want you to understand how those three circles works. Because how many of you want more of him? By a show of hands. Unless you have a broken shoulder or a frozen shoulder, you know, don't raise your hand. But otherwise, right, most people are like, yeah, I do. But if you want to have more of him, you got to have a cleaner vessel, right? And if you want to have a cleaner vessel, that means that there's healing that happens in all three circles. So I want you to say there's healing that happened in all three circles. Say that. There's healing happening in all three circles. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about the body circle, right? This body thing, that's the bottom one, the body, but there's healing in all three circles. So if you don't go on this journey of healing in all three circles, you're never going to be the vessel that you can be for him to work through, right? So he can work for you and within you, right, and through you. How does that sound, right? So we want to have more of him working through us so we can clean that vessel. But there's a healing journey to go through all of them. So I'm going to start with the spirit. We're going to finish with the body. We're going to go through this quickly because we could literally do a class on, you know, multiple classes on each circle. So now I want to show you a little bit of the scripture that talks about you have the big S, which is the Holy Spirit, and then you have the small S, which is your, which is your spirit. Now watch. In the book of Hebrew 4, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than two-edged sword, piercing to the vision of the soul and spirit and joint at marrow and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. Right? So knowing the word of God is kind of important. And why is that important? Because otherwise the enemy can lie to you. Would you agree with that? Maybe some of you, you don't know what I'm just telling you, that the enemy can lie to you. And how does that happen? When people say, hey, Dr. Jean-Guy, you know, I mean, heart disease runs in my family. And I like to tell people the only thing that runs in people's family is silliness. Because guess what? If everybody makes the same decision over and over again, generation after, the ge after generation, then the outcome is going to be the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? So this is not a gene problem. It's a silliness problem. People make bad decisions, so therefore the outcome is the same. If you don't want the outcome to be the same, then you have to make different decisions. Heart disease is not a gene problem. Right? Having high blood pressure is not because you have bad gene. Being stressed out is not because you have bad genes, because everybody's got it in your family. Because people make the same decision, so therefore the outcome is the same. So I want you to know that the Word of God is living and active, and when you read it, it's just going to be like jumping at you. And, you know, God, the Holy Spirit's going to be able to teach you what, what you need to know now. Right? And then you read it again, and then He's going to teach you a little bit more. But when you know the Word right, and you're on a strong foundation, then there's nothing that can shake you. How does that sound? Do you want to just build your walls with sand, or you want to build your walls with, you know, cement? Which one? Pat was supposed to bring me, like, this blueprint. Do you have the blueprint? She forgot the blueprint. But anyway, I sent a text to Pat today. I said, listen, Pat, you work in construction. I'm sure you have a million blueprint right there in your office, right? I said, I want you to bring me a blueprint. And the reason why I wanted her to bring me a blueprint is because every one of you here tonight, with no exception, right, your gene is we all have the same gene pool. It's the same. We have the same gene, right? The blueprint is the same. The only thing that is different is how you build the walls, right? So what you put into your body and what you put into your mind, this is how you're going to be building the walls. The blueprint is the same, though, right? Your blueprint and my blueprint, they're all the same. So if the blueprint is the same, now you know the difference is how you build the walls. And that's important to know because if you know this, that means that there's something that can be done. Some of you might be sitting here tonight and you're like, oh, I have high blood pressure, but everybody has in my family. 
oh, my gut doesn't work properly, but lots of people have that, or I'm just getting old. Oh, yeah, I'm depressed. Oh, right? There's like a million symptoms. Oh, okay. This next one here, it says, Matthew 7, it says, Everyone then who hears these word of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. Who wants to be a wise man? Here we go. I want to be a wise man. I want to be building my house on a rock. Right? But if you don't know the word, you won't be able to do, you know, you're not going to be able to do that because you're always going to be, you're going to doubt. Right? You're not going to be sure because other people have led you to believe right, that the, the, the circumstance that you're in and the condition that you have, it's just like there's nothing that can be done about it. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in here in the United States of America right now in 2024, right, the vast majority of condition that people have, the reason why people die today, I'm going to give you some numbers later, but that's pretty scary. Most of those conditions that people died of, they're just conditions that are we inflect your own self. That means that if you choose to, you can do something about it. How's that sound? Right? Does that sound good? Can you say it sounds good? Yeah, it sounds good. Right? There's something you can do about it. You don't have to be a victim. I want you to know there's something that can be done. I promise we're going to get into this nutrition thing, but we just got to lay down the foundation first. Right? So here's the spirit. Now we're going to get into the soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotion. Can you say mind, will, and emotion? Right? It says, I want, I will, and I feel. I want, I will, and I feel. The battle is in the mind. If you read the word of God, it says, hey, the battle is in the mind. So that's important. So we're going to read some scripture about that. Here's what it says. In 3 John, it says, we, just, we already read it. It says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So God wants your soul to prosper too, right? Your soul needs to be healthy. So when people come to the office, which I had the office painted, it's not there anymore, but it used to say, you know, what you think about, talk about, brings about. And if you've been to one of our class or maybe 21 of our class, right, or maybe 100 of those classes, you know, usually I would say something like, hey, you got to think well, you got to move well, you got to eat well. Thinking well is in the soul realm, right? So here it says in 2 Timothy, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So fear, right, false evidence appearing real is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. You want to replace fear with faith. Right? If you have fear, you're never going to be healthy. Do you understand that? If you have fear, you will never going to be healthy. Because did you know that today in 2024, which they've known that for a long time, and I'm just telling you that you can create health with your mind, and you can also create disease with your mind. So if you have fear, you can create your own disease. Right? So there's people, they live in fear every day, but if you knew the Word of God... And you can just learn the scripture, and you can repeat the scripture, and you can memorize the scripture, and you can sing the scripture, right? You will not let that happen because fear is the opposite of faith. So who wants faith? Okay, very good. Fear is, you know, it's false evidence appearing real. It's just not, not, not real. And I don't want to be picking on COVID, but I just have to. All right, I just have to tell you this one little blurb. But I just want to tell you why this is important, right? I, mean, I don't want to pick on anybody, but I just want to tell you this, that the saddest thing that is happening right now is when you see a person by themselves on the sidewalk with their mask on, right? This should never happen. Do you understand why those people live in fear? They think they literally, it's not about the mask, it's because people think they're going to die. Do you see what I'm saying? When you, when, you, when you live in fear, it's much worse than having a disease. Much worse, Right? So I want you to understand that this is like the worst thing that people can do. The worst thing that you can do. If you don't allow your immune system to recognize what's happening in the environment right now, it doesn't matter if you have stage, stage 4 cancer. It doesn't matter the condition you have. It doesn't matter what you have whatsoever. It doesn't matter. There is no reason whatsoever to walk on the sidewalk with a mask on. There's no reason. There's no good reason. Zero. Right? And I guarantee you that people do this, unfortunately, because they're in fear. And it's sad, right? I want you to know that. Your immune system needs to be able to recognize what's happening in the environment so it can build itself up. Yes, who wants to be stronger? Raise your hand. Here we go. I want to be stronger. She didn't raise her hand. Raise your hand right now. I'm watching. Mary, come on. Here we go. Now, now we're talking. I'm watching you. Okay, so in Romans 12, it says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, right? What's pleasing and perfect will, okay? And then here it says, Ephesians 4, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. And then as well as all types of evil behavior. This is really, really important. I want to tell you a little bit of a story about that, that, you know, everybody, can you say everybody? Everybody. Everybody's been hurt. Everybody has their wounds. That means that people have been hurt by their mother, by their father, by their teacher, by their preacher, right? Somebody that is close to you, even if you have perfect parents, just so you know. I, I know some of you are like, I got perfect parents. They never hurt me. I'm like, well, probably unlikely. But anyway, right? They're still perfect. I'm just telling you that everybody has wounds. Everybody, right? So what happens is when we don't forgive, right? Or if you don't get rid of the bitterness or if you don't get rid of the anger, then what happens is you cannot become the clean vessel that God wants you to be so your body can heal. So one time here, uh, you know, one time I was, uh, you know, at our church, Dr. Denise and I, you know, right across the street, my hope church, right? You can just walk there. If you don't have a church, you should come and hang out with us. So we're at a church, and uh, there's missionary. I believe his name was Jason Friend. And Jason was, uh, I believe he was from South Africa, South America, somewhere in the South. And he's a missionary, and he's telling the story. Right now, listen, this is really important. He's telling the story. Right? He says, I was a, a, a healing uh, you know, this revival, and for one week, right, there's pastors after pastors, there's ministers there that are on the stage, there's thousands of people, and people uh, come in for their healing. And then you see people getting healed, getting out of their wheelchair. You see, like, all kinds of things happening now for days after days after days. But yet, there, there's wheelchair person, they right there in front of the stage, right there. And then for four days, they've been there for all of those, right, all of those meetings, those healing meetings, and there's thousands of people that have, that have gotten healed, but not this person. So he's like, he, that's his turn to go there on Thursday. I mean, I'm, I'm just relating the story here. He's like, that's my turn to go on Thursday, and I want to know why is this guy still in his wheelchair. And he sends somebody over to him, and he says, hey, do you want to get healed? And the guy said, well, why do you think I'm here? Right? And then the next question was a powerful one. The next question was, if you were to get healed, what would you do? And he said, I would go home, I would load up my gun, and I would go shoot that son of a bitch that did that to me. And you know what? When I heard that story, right, I was thinking, I'm like, who? Right? Sometimes we have our own roadblocks. And just a couple days ago, this man came to the office. And right at the Catholic church, uh, right in town, they had this healing meetings. Dr. Healy. Some of you, I don't know if you knew her or not, but Dr. Healy was there. And they like, uh, at the Catholic uh, church, they had like three, 400 people. And the guy says to me, right, he's like, oh, yeah, that was packed last night, you know. And he's like, I love this lady because... This lady, she doesn't believe that her, that she's doing the healing. She says, God does the healing. I'm like, oh, yeah, amen to that. And then he says, you know, all she talks about at all those meetings for the past three days is people have roadblocks, right? They have roadblocks because they haven't forgiven others or maybe they're, they're angry or maybe they're bitter. So as it relates to your health and my health, right, if this journey, your soul journey, your soul healing journey, we don't work on, right? Then what happens is this is, can be a roadblock for you to get better. Does that make sense? Right? And again, we can have multiple classes with multiple hours just talking about that. But it's going to be enough for tonight. I just want to finish with that so you get it. So that story there that I heard from this missionary was very impactful to me. Right? And since then, we, right here at Gilead, right, oftentimes people are like, well, what's Gilead? Is that a church? No, Gilead is a healing center. It's not a church. The church is, it's right across the street. It's called My Hope Church. You wanna, you're looking for a church? Come with us. That's the church. This is a healing center. Right? And what we do is we truly work those three circles on that healing journey, right? So people can work the three circles so you can be a cleaner vessel, so you can work for you, through you, and within you 
right? Ultimately to be able to be a cleaner vessel for other people so you can touch other people's lives. And then we get to the next one, which is the body one, which I know that's what you're here for. You're like, right, when are we going to start? Right? We will. But if you don't have a strong foundation, we can't start because then you don't know what we're talking about. Right? Eating God's way is like, what does that mean? If you, don't have, if you don't start with the foundation that God wants you to be healthy and you don't know that and you don't know the Word talks about it, then you just don't know what you don't know. So here it says in 1 Corinthians 6.19, it says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? whom you have from God. And it says, you're not your own, so you were bought at a price to so glorify your body. Which is very interesting, because in those circles, now listen to me for a minute, in those circles, it's like a, a dichotomy that the body is at the bottom, just so you know. Right? If you didn't see those three circles, the body is like the last one. Right? The body has the least authority. Right? Can you say least authority? Least authority. You would think that these days that the body has like the most authority. Right? Because you just want what you want whenever you want it. But according to the scripture, you know, the body has the least authority. And then it says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then you should, you should take care of it. Right? You should make this body submit, but you should also take care of it. This next one here, it says in Galatians 5.24, it says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passion and desire. And then this next one in Galatians 5, 17, it says, For the flesh desire what is contrary to the Spirit, which is big S, that's the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Now, this is your homework. It's not going to be on when you scan the QR code. It's not going to say that. This, you might want to write it down or to just commit this to memory. Your homework is to go read Roman 8. Right? That's your homework. Roman 8. So you understand this thing that you know, what has the highest authority versus the lowest authority. Your body has the lowest authority. So you have to beat up, beat up the flesh in order to submit to the spirit. Right? That means that if I say to you, well, you should start fasting, you're not going to be like, ah, oh, why would you do that? That's hard. I mean, who wants to fast? You know, people don't eat for two hours. They're like, oh, I'm hungry. Right? Like beating up the flesh is like, hey, you know, you're not going to win here, body. King's stomach, you're not going to win, right? You're not going to win. Okay, Galatians 6, it says, Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Yes? So the highest authority is the Spirit. But in order for God to work through us, you know, we've got to clean up work on our healing journey in all three circles. We go to the next one now. 1 Corinthians 9.27, it says, But, Paul says, But I discipline my body and bring it to subjection. That sounds fun, isn't it? Like you want to beat up the flesh in order to submit to the spirit. How's that sound? Can all of you just like with a big smile, you're like, Oh, that sounds great! You know, I really don't like to tell too much of our story, but this is a good story and I can pick on my wife for a minute. Right? So we were part of this group a long time ago. Sometimes I have this jacket on. People always ask me, what is the, this W means? Right? And it was a, a coaching group from Canada. It was called Warrior Coaching. And at one of our first uh, training that we had, it was in Calgary, Alberta, because we missed the other one in the south. I don't know why we missed it, but it was a big mistake, believe me. Right? So we, we uh, flew to Calgary, Alberta, which is... It's like the North Pole, okay? I mean, in case you don't know, it's like, it's really like, it's north and it's cold and there's a lot of snow. So we're about to land in Calgary, Alberta, right there at the airport. And as we're landing, right, there's a big snowstorm, like a snowstorm. And then I tell my wife, because I already knew that I had heard from this group that we were doing training with that, hey, you know, we're going to go run tomorrow morning. I mean, did you bring your shoes, your, your boots and everything? She's like, no, I'm not going running. Okay, rebellious spirit right out of the gate, right? I mean, I wasn't. I mean, she was. So then I'm like, okay. So then we go to the airport, and then we go to the hotel, go to bed, and then at 4.30 we get up. And then coming down, I'm like, okay, so are you ready to go run? I'm not running. And I'm thinking to myself, but I'm not saying out loud. I'm like, I'm hoping that the leaders of this group going to be like, there's a lot of snow out, and we're not going to go run this morning. 
right? That's what I'm thinking. And then we get down, there's like 100 people there, and he's like, okay, let's go run. And I'm like, well, I only have my running shoes, you know? I mean, there's like three feet of snow right there at the airport, and it's still coming down. So then we get out there. My wife wasn't there. I mean, she stayed inside, just so you know. It's, it's a side note, right? So we get out there for an hour. I've got like snow all the way up to my knees. And then we come back, and it's like army style. There's people are missing. So if you're missing, you cannot go back in, right? You have to wait until everybody is there. So they're like, well, we're going to send a few people back out to go find them. So now we're two hours into this thing because we lost people. There's a snowstorm, and you're like all the way up to the knees. I'm freezing cold, right? Running shoes on. Then Miss Dr. Denise, she's inside. Side note, right? So but this group here come to find out, right? That was their model. The model was like, hey, you have to beat up the flesh in order to submit to the spirit. How's that sound? You guys like it? Everybody wants to sign up for this coaching program? Anyway, I just love it so much. I did that for seven years. And this was just like the, the easy part of it. But anyway, we're going to move on now. Okay, ready? Side note. So now we're going to get into this, this body thing. So now in this, the body portion of it, what I want to share with you is, if we were to break it down to make it simple, right, there's two things that this body has to do with, you know, how we can address that is, you have one that is movement, which we're not going to talk about tonight, which is moving your body. And then there's one that is the eating part. So you've got to move well, you've got to eat well, and you've got to think well. All right? You've got to move well, you've got to eat well, you've got to think well. We're going to talk about the eating part. Are you ready? Say yes. 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 We are ready. Yes. yes. Okay, so we'll talk about the eating part. So remember now the blueprint. All right? The blueprint is the same for all of us. Yes? Our blueprint is the same. Our genome is the same. Our genes haven't changed, right? The genes are the same. If a person had tri tri trisomy 21, right? If you have Down syndrome, 100% of the time, generation after generation, you're going to have the same thing. It's a true genetic problems. However, true genetic problems are a very small percentage, right? Very, very small percentage of people that have illnesses. You understand that, right? The vast majority of People that have diseases today, they're chronic illnesses, meaning that it's self-inflicted. And there's a big part of this self-infliction has to do with what we're putting in this body that you have, that God's giving you, that God wants you to take care of, right? He's just like, hey, this is so precious to me. I'm going to just hand it over to you. You're supposed to take care of it. How good of a job have you been doing? Right? Probably all of us can be like, oh, at time, not so good. Right? Not so good. So we want to take care of this fine machine. So now let's get into it. So here it says the problem with food, we have to define health. I'm going to tell you here, I'm going to do, there's multiple definitions of health, but there's one of them in the medical dictionary, right? According to the World Health Organization, it says that health is when you have uh, the optimal functioning of your body, and it goes on to say physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Now, I'm not expecting you to either memorize it or to write it down, but I'm going to say it one more time, right? You being healthy is when you have your body is working at 100% functioning, and then it goes on to say physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. So what that means is a person not having symptoms doesn't mean that they're healthy, which there's a lot of people. I don't want to be giving you the little like uppercut punch to the men that are in this room tonight, but most men would be like, hey, if it's not broken, let's not. Yeah, I mean, come on. Every man here, they just know that. I mean, I hear it every day. They're like, Dr. Jean, yeah, I feel fine. I'm like, that's okay. Is that possible? You could be like having stage four cancer and you feel fine. Is that possible? Yeah, it happens all the time. Right? So I want you to know that. You should know that. Is that possible that something is not working, functioning properly, even if you don't have any symptoms? The answer is yes. Happens all the time. Right? So that's important. So the definition of health, you need to know that. If you don't know what health is, then you don't know, you know, how to compare it with what. Right? If you think that health is just the absence of symptoms, then you think because you don't have any symptoms that you're healthy. Could that be wrong? Say yes. Yes. Okay. And then number two, it says, where does your food come from, right? It says ground trees and moving. 
So one of the greatest things today and probably one of the uh, one of the attributes, one of the things that maybe that I can bring to the plate to most people, right, is I want you to know that because I grew up on a farm and still to this day I go back home, my cousins, they, they're still farming thousands of acres of farmland, right? And I still go hang out with them. And one of her specialty was to grow those little baby carrots. Who does not like baby carrots? I mean, all of you here, I'm sure that you just, people love them. I mean, they love them, you know, mainly because they're just, they're sweet. I mean, it's more sugar, right? But let's just pretend that you like vegetables and you like the baby carrots. You know, did you know that today when they just, you know, they harvest those baby carrots, would take, it takes like forever to harvest them. I mean, forever from the time of the, you plant them to, you know, to get them up, you know, to harvest time for those little baby carrots that are sweet and amazing. And then they bring them in those, those little big vat there, you know, and they just like, they, they just take, you know, they just clean them up. And then after that, they just bait them into chlorine just to make sure that it would make them last longer. Right? How does that sound? And then we put them in a bag. And then you can have them in a bag for the next three years. Right? And then you go buy them at the store. And then by the time you bring them home, you see this little film of white film there in the plastic bag. Do you know why? It's because it's been bathing in chlorine. Right? So people eat that every day. They're like, Dr. Jean Guy, you know, I eat well. I'm like, what does that mean? Right? Or, Dr. Jean Guy, you know, I mean, my doctor said I should not eat any red meat. It's really bad for you. So you have to ask yourself more questions because that's really important, right? More questions, and maybe the next question is like, if you were to eat red meat, right, you want to ask the question, well, where's that coming from, right? If it's coming from the cow, then you'd be like, your next question would be like, what was the cow eating? Was the cow eating soy, corn, and wheat? That is, 90% of it in this country is genetically modified. It's being sprayed on with high fructose corn syrup. Versus if you had a cow that in they, their entire life they've been eating grass, is that different? Yes? Do you know that when you go to the store and it says natural on what you're buying, do you know what the word natural means? Right? It means nothing. It means I got you. That's what it means. I got you. Right? People go to the store like natural. Right? People go to the health food store. They're like, Dr. Jean Guy, I buy everything at the health food store. And I like to tell people, right? Humor is good. Humor is good. Right? I'm like, at the health food store, you know, it's just like everything is organic, but it's not because it's organic that it's good for you. It's just like it's still crap. It's just more expensive crap. Right? Because it says organic. You see what I'm saying? We don't want to be misled. That's why we need wisdom. And then it says, what's the problem? You know, there's big problems. You don't know what you don't know. So that's, this is where the wisdom comes from. Now check this out. Well, it's going to be in a few slides from now. But here it says the life expectancy at birth by sex in 2022. In the United States, we're just the worst. Do you understand? We're the worst. Do you know what worse means? If we're comparing ourselves to industrialized country, we're ranked like 45 or 50. We're, we're just the worst. So what that means is we have the greatest doctor, we have the greatest nurse, the greatest technology, the greatest of everything, but yet our health is like, right? You need to be asking yourself the right question in order to get the right answer. If you don't have the right question, you won't get the right answer. Does that make sense? We're going to get into this food thing, I promise you, but we need to have foundation first. This next one here, it says, it says the national health expenditure grew by 4.1% to $4.5 trillion in 2022, which is $13,493 per person, which account for almost 18% of your gross domestic product. Do you know what that means? Right? That means that people will spend on their health, right, on their health, an average of 18% of the gross domestic product, almost $14,000 per year, Right? Now, it's not so bad if you were to be healthy, but if we spend $14,000 per year, and then our health is completely at the bottom, meaning we're the sickest people on the planet. Do you see how that's just like, it just doesn't work? Right? So now, I don't want you to shake your head. I just want you to understand, right? Because sometimes people, they try to have this debate. They're like, oh, Dr. Jean-Guy, I mean, we live longer than we've ever lived. 
I'm like, the only reason why you live longer than you've ever lived is because you take all those drugs and then we have organ transplant. That's the only reason, right? You have drugs and organ transplant. But the, the question is, do you have any quality of life? Who wants to be around like Moses until 120, but yet you're at the nursing home drooling all over yourself? Who wants that? I didn't say like 120 in your, in your wheelchair drooling all over yourself. I said going up the mountain to meet God, and then you're 120, and then your, your, your eyes were undim, and your vigor was unabated. How does that sound? Right? That sounds good to me. Right? That's what I want. So here's chronic illnesses. The numbers change, you know, by 100,000. I mean, no big deal. The bottom line is lots of people, right? 562,000 people, it's like the number of, of people that will die from heart disease every single year. I mean, the last I checked a couple weeks ago was 595,000. Let's just say 600,000. 700,000 people die from cancer every year. Every year. Every year. Not just like uh, this is COVID year, we're going to lose a million people. Right? I mean, I'm not sure everybody had COVID, but I'm just saying that every single year, 600,000 people die from, from heart disease. Nobody talks about them, or barely. 700,000 people die from cancer year after year after year after year. Nobody talks about those people. And then there's a million people dying every year after year after year. Right? One million people dying every year because of the current medical system we live in and the reaction to drugs that people take. How does that sound? Sounds good? Right? Do you see the picture? Do you understand the picture? I don't want you to write many things tonight, but I want you to write this down. Are you ready? If you have a pen, are you going to tell your neighbor? I want you to write this down or to tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm going to pay one way or the other. I want you to write this down. I'm going to pay one way or the other. Every decision we make, you will pay one way or the other. We either invest into our health, right? Or you're going to be spending your money into your trying to manage your disease. I'm going to say this one more time because that's really important. Words matter. You're going to be investing into being healthy or it's going to cost you some money. You're going to spend money into managing your disease. There's only two routes. There's not three. There's only two. That's it. Right? Only two routes. So those are the numbers. Look it up. It's a lot of fun. So here it says, what fits for your busy schedule? Right? Would you rather exercise one hour a day or being dead in 24, 24 hours a day? Which one would you rather? Right? So people are like, ah, I don't want to do that. I don't have time for that. Right? Now remember, you either you invest in your health, right, a little bit every day, or you're going to be spending it to manage your disease and to suffer and then to die early. Every decision people make, it's one or two routes. There's no other routes. This is it. Right? You can look at yourself in the mirror and just say, self, you know, the decision that I make every day, it's only one or two routes, and you make the decision. They're not wrong. They're just decision. Does that make sense? Right? That's important. Here it says, what's the new model? It says God's way or man's way? Everybody, right? I would like to say that all of you be like, hey, I'm in God's way. Right? But remember, we need to line up. We need to be congruent with what we believe to be true. So let's say that you go to the store and you go buy some bread, right? And then it says whole wheat and rich. And it costs $1. And then you buy a loaf of Ezekiel 4.9 and it costs you $6. And people would say something like, I can't afford that. I'm like, well, you can either have this loaf at $1 that it says whole wheat and rich. Do you know what and rich means? It means the company got rich <laughs> while we're killing you faster. And you could have six slices before you get full. 
Or you could have the Ezekiel 4.9 and you could have one slice and then you're done. Which one you think is better? Now remember, there's only one or two decisions that you do. People invest to be healthy, right? Or they spend money, right, in order to fuel their disease process. There's only two ways. I really wanted you to be able to read this, but I put it so small so you wouldn't read it. See, now I'm going to go real fast. We're going to skip that. Here it says we spend a lot of money and we die really early and it's really bad. Okay? That's all it says. And you won't have time to write it down. So it says who are we following? All right? So I would like to think that after tonight we're going to follow, we're going to follow God's way. So here it says, that's why I wanted to get to is like, in Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people will perish because of a lack of, because of knowledge. People don't know what they don't know. People are not stupid. They're just ignorant. I mean, I guess maybe some people are. But I would like to think that people are ignorant because they don't know. That's why I dedicated my life 25 years now, right, to share this with people. Because I do believe that if you hear it, right, you see it, I'll let you experience it. And hopefully you're going to change your ways. You might not, but that's what I'm praying for. This scripture is really important. Right? So here it says in Genesis 1, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seeds that is on the face of all the earth and every trees with seeds and its fruit, and then you shall have them for food. It doesn't say here you should eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. Did not say that. Right? It doesn't say cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta. It did not say that. Right? Right? Why do you guys get all quiet on me? I mean, I'm just telling you. Is that what it says? Right? I want you to pay attention to what it says. That's really important. Because this is going to give you like, I like to tell our team there. I said, listen, I said, I want you guys to write this down. That success leaves clues. Success. I want you to say that. Success leaves clues. Right? Success leaves clues. I don't like to tell this to people. I'm going to tell you tonight. This is my secret. I've been in practice for 25 years. I've never missed one day. Never one day. I'm like a Boy Scout. I just report for duty. Not one day. Is that pretty good? Okay, I just want you to know. I don't just tell people. I just do it. Why would you just want to tell people and not do it? I just live this every day. Right? We don't, you don't have to be perfect. Success leaves clues. It's possible to have a family that doesn't take medication. It's possible to have a family that don't have to take antibiotic every other week. It's possible to have a family that you can raise a family and you can just feed them and you can make sure they're moving well, they're eating well, they're thinking well, to make sure that, you know, they understand about God's ways and, and, and then to, to have the, the fruit, right, the fruit as a result of following what God put out there for you and I Right? And when we follow there, when you're, we're being obedient, then we get the blessing with that. I'm reading the year Bible right now. This is my epiphany, right? Not real far into this process. It's like well, I'm in the book of Joshua now, right? But there's one thing that I know is God is into detail. And then the next thing that I notice is not only God is into detail, God is into this thing called obedience. And when there's obedience, there's blessing, right? If you just disobey long enough, you cannot eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta long enough. That your body's not going to break down. It will happen. I promise you. Right? It's going to happen. You cannot just disobey the laws and thinking that it's not going to have any impact. It's going to happen. It has to. You cannot just disobey and thinking there's blessing and disobedience. It's not going to happen. That's why I'm showing you this. It's like it's, it's right there. It's right there. Okay, this next one, Genesis 9, it says, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Right? It says, I give you the green plants and then give you everything. So, hey, green plants, you should eat green stuff. Right? The green plants. And it says, if it's moving, you can have it. Right? People are like, well, I'm a vegetarian. I'm like, well, my cows at my house, they eat grass. So then, does that count? <laughs> grass. They are vegetarian and then I eat them. Right? Does that count? I mean, maybe it doesn't count for you. It just counts for me. Right? So if it's moving, I just eat it. 
But now you have to be asking the question. What's the question? Who can tell me? Who's going to tell me? Right? Where's that coming from? How were those animals treated? When I was in school, we read a book. It's called A, a, a Diet for New America. Don't read the book. Don't even write it down. Right? But A Diet for New America it was written by John Robbins, which is the son of Baskin Robbins. So you see what I'm getting with this, right? And the ice cream man. I mean, I love ice cream. Just so you know, my wife used to buy me ice cream, like gallons of them every day. I mean, I'm an ice cream recovery addict. Right? <laughs> love ice cream. I mean, my flesh is weak when there's ice cream in front of me. Just so you know. Right? So now listen. A diet for New America. So John Robbins, you read the book. You're, by the time you're done reading the book, you're like, I want to be a vegetarian. But you have to understand why did he write the book. John Robbins wrote the book. He wrote the book because his motive was, right, in the United States of America, we don't treat the animal properly. And he was right. Still right to this day. If you go on big farms, you'll see how they treat the animals. Those animals are not treated properly. Matter of fact, you can have uh, what they call now, according to the FDA, with the proper writing, it's going to say you can have like um, cage-free chicken. Okay, and what that means is you could have a little square 10 by 10. You could have 2,000 chicken. If you have a little hole in the wall this big, even if they never go out, it's called cage-free chicken. But you don't know that. You're like, well, that sounds good, Right? So then you buy the meat and you're like, well, it says natural or it says organic. Now, remember, if you were to buy some organic meat, that means that the cows be eating corn, soy, and wheat its entire life. Now, it's probably better than corn, soy, and wheat that's been sprayed and that's been having all those chemicals on top of them. But if you have corn, wheat, and soy that's been eating that an entire life, it says organic. When you eat it, guess what's going to happen in your body? Now, I know you don't know yet. I'm, you're just ignorant, but I'm going to tell you, when you eat corn, soy, and wheat, it causes inflammation. And when you have inflammation, low-grade inflammation causes chronic illnesses. So the more of that that you eat, the more that you're just speeding up this process at which you're, you're just like, you have no chance to make it to Moses. No chance. You won't be able to make it 120. Because guess what? You only have 120 copies in the toner, right? What happens is you make the first copy, it looks pretty good. But when you get the copy 100, the copy doesn't look as good. Does that make sense? So there's things that we do as far as how we treat our body that will allow, your, it will allow you to make copies faster. But you only have 120 copies. That's it. 120. So how do you want to make the copy? You want to make the copy slow or you want to make them fast? But if you eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, you're making them really fast, right? If you're eating corn, soy, and wheat, you're making them really fast. Do you follow me? Because what happens is you just you ruin your pancreas, you ruin your adrenal glands, and then what happens, your estrogen gets really high in the body, and then you just like this skyrocket, you know, people that have like cancer that are estrogen, you know, that are estrogen, that estrogen feeds the cancer, which is super common today, right? Breast cancer, <laughs> because breast tissue is like full of, you know, fat cells, and your body loves to store the crap in the fat cells. So then you have breast cancer that are being driven by estrogen. So then you eat cake, cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, pasta, soy, corn, right? Which they spray, they spray, they spray with herbicides and pesticide and glyphosate and all of those things are derivative of estrogen, right? And then what happens is then the cancer goes like that, right? So as more people are dying, then they're getting rich at the same time. How's that sound? Okay, here, I got away from food here. You guys are distracting me. Okay, and Daniel, it says, you know, at the beginning of the year, this is real popular. It says, please test your servant for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink and then see what happened. And what happened is, if you read the book of Daniel, then it tells you, hey, those guys, they just looked amazing. You know I mean? They were just like, right? When people go on a Daniel fast, they're like, boy, I sleep so much better and I have so much more energy, right? And I can do so much more. And people send me email at 10 o'clock at night. They're like, I need another job. And I'm like, no problem. You know, I got lots of work. Why do you think that is? Because when you start eating food, food has energy. Can you say food has energy? Yeah, food has energy, right? Food has energy. But when you eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, it's dead. It's dead. It's not God's food. It's dead. But it tastes good, right? It tastes good. 
but it's dead. So when people would start eating more food, they're like, I've got more energy. I'm like, yeah, that's good. Do you like it? Okay, this next one. Oh, here we go. Here's the QR code. It's time now. Let's do it quickly because I'm going to just rip through this really fast. I mean, snap through this. You're going to get all the scripture. It's coming at you. Scan the QR code. Okay, now listen. Uh, this is only for the scripture. I mean, you're not going to get any email or text from me or anything like that. I'm just telling you this is just, you're going to get all the scripture went over tonight and the remaining of it. You'll have it all. You just got to put your name in there so we can have, instead of having every one of you here coming in, putting your name, putting down your email address, which I won't be able to read tonight. I'm like, okay, let's just do it yourself. If you don't want it, then you don't have to scan the QR code. If you don't want the scriptures, this is what you're going to have. When you scan this, you'll get all the scriptures. It's going to be sent over to you. Fair enough? Yep, no problem. You're welcome. Work really hard on that. <laughs> Pat worked really hard on that. Pat is amazing. Okay, so everybody got the QR code? If you got the QR code, then you'll have that. We'll send that over to you. Every one of them. So you'll have a better understanding. QR code, we're good? QR code? QR code. I mean, going once. QR code going, Zane's got it. He says, I got it. Got the QR code. Just put your information in there. Put your email. I'm giving you time. And then we'll send it to you. So then you have them all. You have them all. Okay. Raise your hand when you're ready to move on. Well, there's only half of you. I mean, what happened with the other half? You're still like putting your name in there? I mean, hurry up. Type faster. <laughs> Type faster. Come on. I mean, people can type really fast these days. I mean, not all us that are like, you know, older, wiser, hopefully. Okay, we're moving on from the QR code. Oh, those are good. <laughs> I mean, who wants some of that? This guy comes to the office. His name is Chuck. When he first came in, when he first came in. No, that's not your husband, Pat. This is another Chuck. <laughs> it's another Chuck. I mean, I can just give the person any name you want, but his real name is Chuck, and it was not Pat's husband. So he comes to the office, right, when I first started working with him. And then his favorite place would be to go to the, you know, the cups and donut shop. They had like a franchise or something, right? He would go to Claire, and he would go to this place. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, you got high blood pressure, you got diabetes, you got like, you're taking statin medication, blood pressure medication, you know, excess fluid medication. I mean, those donuts, they got to go. He's like, yeah, but they taste good. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. You want like, you want them to just go on a kidney transplant, kidney dialysis, or you want to just stop your donuts? Which one would you rather have? Now, remember the investment, you can either invest in your health or you can spend your money right, to fuel your disease and for people to manage your disease while we're killing you softly. Which one do you want? There are no wrong decisions. I'm just telling you people make those decisions every day, right? Those, this is real food. This is not food. In case this doesn't like, the vibration of this is like a turtle, right? It's really slow. There is no vibration. It's dead, okay? But this is real food, so you can eat, you can eat food, Right? You're allowed to have that. I'm going to give you a side, note, side notes about nuts and seeds. Is those seeds, they should have like, those seeds have oil on them, and they, the oil should be shiny. So what happens is people eat seeds, but if you eat seeds that are stale, when the oil turns rancid, there is this thing called lipid peroxidation on those nuts and seeds, and then those are known carcinogen. So you have to ask yourself, where do those seeds come from? Tell you a quick story about this lady came in today. True story. I'm not going to tell you her name, but... She says to me, she's like, oh, you know, I mean, I just found out that my nuts were coming from China. Oh, I don't want to buy anything from China. I'm like, okay. So she's like, well, I decided to go to the health food store to buy my nuts. I'm like, well, that sounds good. However, we're going to give you a side note when you go to the health food store buying nuts. Are you ready? Most of the people that hang out at the health food store, they're, many of them are vegetarian. And they don't want to get fat, so they don't want to eat nuts. So those nuts, they just stay there for years, years on end. There is not like we're going to sell a lot of them because we don't. So those nuts at the health food store, I'm not sure I buy them though. Just so you know, side note, 
right? Especially if you're in the, this in the bulk stuff. Nuts and seeds should have like oils on them, should be shiny. And then if you have nuts and seeds, you should like, if they're sprouted, it's better. What does that mean? You can soak them in water. People used to do that. People don't do that anymore, but you can. You can soak it in water and then you put it in the oven, which most people don't do that. I'm just telling you that this is what the sprouting process is, right? Side note, we've got to move on here. We don't have much more time. We've got to go. It says, right, when people, people came out of Egypt, they were, just, they were just whining. Just so you know, that's another side note, right? People came out of Egypt. They're just whining. They're like, you know, it was so much better when we were there, when we were slaves. Over there, we had some food, right? We had some cucumbers and melons and leeks and onions and garlic. I mean, they're just whining. We used to have all this food, but now we don't. Then what happened is, you know, they had this little disobedience, distrust, right? They didn't trust that God could just take care of them. But my point here is, you know, they were, I guess when they were slaves, they were eating food, right? That's food, just so you know. This green stuff, you should have some of that every day, right? Green stuff every day. Green, it's like life. It's like there's energy there's vibration there's like it's going to help you there's life in food when you eat food then you have more life when you eat more junk then you just die faster how does that sound all right just telling you it's a side note this next one here it says in proverb it says eat honey right it should be just dripping all over you side note about honey you want to try to have some raw honey See, what happened is in our industrialized world, what they've done with all the dairy and the honey and all that is like we, we have this thing that we pasteurize everything, right? God forbid, right? You got to wash your hands. You got to clean your hands. You got to scrub them so well that you got to see blood. Just so you know, as a side note, your skin was never designed to be sterilized and you just like rub it until you see blood coming out. There's this thing called the microbiome. There's the biome. There's like... You have supposed to have all the good bacteria on your skin, right? All the good stuff is supposed to be there. You have to just drag your hands on the ground, you know, and then you just lick them, right? That would help your immune system to do that, just so you know. I don't know why you make faces like this. If you grew up on the farm, you would have done it a thousand times. Why do you think that I've never missed a day of work in 25 years? Because I grew up on the farm. Because I was eating dirt every day. Right? When my wife met me, we would go to farmer's market, and I'd just take the vegetables, i eat them all. My, my stepkids at the time, they're like, ah, what's that? Don't do that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that? They're like, well, somebody else touched them. I'm like, well, good. Got to get a little bit of their stuff. Right? I know you just think you're like, you're gross, Dr. jean -Guy. I'm just telling you, you just don't get it. You build an immune system by exposure, right? Exposure. If you don't get exposed, you can't build your immune system. You're never going to be stronger. People have this little sniffle now, and what do they do? They go get an antibiotic, right? People do that like every other week. Every time you take one antibiotic, it wipes out your gastrointestinal tract for two years. How's that sound? Who wants that? Want to sign up for the program? No, because people already have signed up, right? I mean, people take antibiotic every month. They're like, yeah, I had some, some dripping in the back of my throat, and I was sick. I'm like, so? What's the problem with that? You weren't sick. You were expressing health. I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm expressing health. I'm not joking. I want you to tell your neighbor. I mean, you guys weren't even serious. See, if I have this little cough, I'm just expressing health. If I have a fever, I'm expressing health. If I have a diarrhea, I'm expressing health. Right? But you, you, you wouldn't think that, would you? Some of you, you see your kids or your grandkids, you're like, whoa, I don't want to touch those little germ, germaphobe. You know, they're the, they, they just go to the daycare and they come back and they have all the germ. I'm like, you should hang out with your grandkids. You should get all the germs. How do you think you're going to build your immune system if you're not, you don't have exposure? I am being serious. I mean, if you think I'm gross, that's okay. But I'm just telling you that, I mean, I, I, I do wash my hands once in a while. 
Okay? I mean, I do take a shower too. I'm just telling you. I want you to understand that I'm not afraid. And you shouldn't be afraid either. That's how your body builds itself. That's the way God made your body. But you have to understand how God made you so you understand how you can work with God, not against what? The designer. Your gut is so important. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. So if you don't have the right bugs in there, you will not be able to defend yourself. So why do you think we have so many gut issues today, which is an epidemic? People that have colitis and they have Crohn's and they have leaky gut and they have IBS and they have indigestion and they have like constipation and they have diarrhea and they have like, I mean, it's astounding to me. People will come in and say, oh yeah, I have this normal this normal, like, diarrhea. I'm like, what does that mean? Well, I've had it for 10 years. I'm like, 10 years of diarrhea. That doesn't sound normal to me. Right? Your gut is so, so important. There's three compartments in your body. How many? Three. The first one is from your mouth through your rectum. That's compartment number one. That's the tube. Then you have tube number two is your blood. Tube number three is the tissue. There's only three tubes. What happened is your first tube there is for your protection. This is the gatekeeper. And if that tube is not healthy, you're done. You're in deep trouble. Right? What does that have anything to do with nutrition? It's because when you eat cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, guess what happened? This tube here gets completely destroyed. This tube here has a lining, a protection, gatekeepers. And when that lining is being destroyed, then you have big holes. And then when you eat stuff that you shouldn't eat, then what happens is that stuff starts leaking right through it. And then you're, you're, it goes into your blood. And then your immune system sees that as being foreign to the body. And it starts attacking it. And then when it starts attacking it, then you have low-grade inflammation. And when you have low-grade inflammation long enough, then you're going to have heart disease. Then you're going to start your immune system. Did you know that your immune system goes in and out of cancer cells right over 40 times a day? If you just look in guidance physiology, which is if you go to medical school, if you go to dentist school, chiropractic school, guidance physiology, that's the Bible of physiology. And it says in there, word for word, it says your immune system is going to go in and out, right, of cancer cells every day because your immune system can recognize the cancer cell, can just take care of it and just be done with it all day long. That's what your body does. But what happened is when it loses the ability to do that because you've been eating cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, and then you live in fear, which is false evidence appearing real, and you go away from faith, right? Then what happens is your body starts breaking down, and then your immune system, when it's low enough, then those cancer cells, guess what happened? Then you have, no def- you have no defense against them anymore. You're done, right? So your gut is really important. That was a side note. This next one here, it says you can have honey, but it should be raw honey, right? It should be raw everything. It should not be pasteurized. It should not be homogenized the best that you can, right? In the state of Michigan, you can buy raw milk. You can can have a a, a cow share program. You cannot buy raw milk, but you can buy raw cheese, which most people don't know that, right? If you're going to eat cheese, you should have raw cheese. That means it's not pasteurized. It's not homogenized. It's like all the good bacteria are there. It's like it's dirty, and you should have it, right? Just kidding, right? Raw cheese, you wouldn't even know. Raw, 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 everything raw, honey. Here it says, Second Chronicle, that's a good one. It says, Know that the acts of Asa, first and last, are indeed written in the book of kings of Judah and Israel. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. And yet, in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physician. So then shortly after that, he just, <whistles> just croaked over right? Here my point in case you missed it, right? Is people have more faith in doctors that they have faith into the great physician. And I'm not saying that we don't need doctors. You know, I mean, I like to help people. As a matter of fact, I love to help people. However, I want you to know that you have to be in love with the designer, right? You have to understand that the way God made you is so amazing and supernatural. It's like, it's unexplainable, Still to this day, for some of you, I know you're not old enough, but some of you, if you remember the old Christopher Reeves, the Superman, when Christopher Reeves had his accident, fell off the horse, broke his neck, you know what? For three years, 36 months, they tried to do a body transplant. But that didn't work. And still to this day, right? Still to this day, they're still trying to do body transplant. They're still trying to just like, hey, we're just going to, We're just going to recreate this thing here. We're going to make it brand new. We're going to give you a new body. 
But they still haven't been able to do that. They haven't. When you start learning and you understand how God made your body to work, you just be in love with this thing called your body, and then kicking king's stomach would not win anymore. Right? Then this idea of fasting for more than 30 minutes, right? Maybe you'd be able to do that. Right? You'd be like, okay, I'll find a way. I'll find a way to just maybe go for a couple of hours, maybe for six hours, maybe for 10, maybe 12, maybe a couple of days. Right? It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Your body was completely equipped to fast, but it was not equipped to overeat. Your body was completely equipped to fast, but it was not equipped to overeat. When you overeat, your gene does not know what to do with that, but when you fast, your body knows exactly what to do with that. Right? Because your body goes into this thing called autophagy. Right? Which is this amazing way of preservation that your body just like hit like a whole new level when you go into autophagy, that your body can heal from cancer, your body can heal from heart disease, your body can heal from any diseases you can imagine when you go on a fast. Right? Your body has the ability to do that because of the way God made you. Just so you know. Right? Okay. We're almost there. Isaiah 7. It says, And because of the abundance of milk, and then eat curds, then it says, you know, curds, honey, curds, honey, curds, honey. Okay? So if you're going to have some, it's going to have some cheese, it should be raw. If you're going to have any kind of goat's milk, it should be raw, 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 raw. Not pasteurized, Right? Now, I'm going to tell you, some of you here, just joking aside, just for a minute, you're like, Dr. Jorangi is dirty. Okay, I got it. Um, I mean, I do like dirt, but it's just me. It's just my problem. Let's say that you guys are much cleaner people than me, so let's just pretend here that we're just being serious for a moment. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, you're ready. So just to be serious, I want you to be asking yourself the question, so if you were to get raw milk somewhere, you would go to the farm and you would find out how those people are taking care of their animals, right? See, what happened is when you read that book, A Diet for New America by John Robbins, you know, when you're done reading the book and you're like, hey, those people are just careless. And for the most part, it's true. But there's a lot of farmers out there, and I would encourage all of you here, right? We're going to start soon that you have all those farmers market and all those people there that are, that are vested into doing this to do the right thing on their farm. They're vested. In every single little town there, they always have the farmer's market. There's still people that are vested into taking good care of their animals, into taking good care of their cows, into taking good care of their goats, and, and, and etc. Do you understand that? And you should be connected to those people. Right? And if you do the right thing, right, people are like, well, aren't you afraid of being sick, drinking raw milk? I'm like, well, I mean, I could. But I'm much more afraid of getting a shot I'm much more afraid of getting a prescription medication and taking antibiotic than I'm afraid of being sick from having raw milk. I'm going to tell you that right now. Right? I'm deadly afraid of that. Here it says, Jeremiah 29, you, we've read that, so we're going to skip through this here. Jeremiah 41, it says, but there were 10 men among them who said to Ishmael, do not put, put us to death. For we have stores, wheat, barley, and oil. So sometimes people bring this up to the table. They're like, yeah, but Dr. jean they talk about wheat there, you know, in the Bible. And you always say, hey, you shouldn't stay away from cake, cookies, candy, ice cream, bread, rice, and pasta, right? When people eat corn, soy, and wheat, it's not good. I want you to understand where I come from. In the United States of America, when people eat wheat, right, 90 plus percent of the wheat is genetically modified. It's being sprayed on every day with high fructose corn syrup, right, right? Some of you heard the story. My brother-in-law lives in Laporte, Indiana. Got a farm, five, six hundred acres. And now when, the, when you don't have an irrigation system to water the soy, corn, and wheat, then what they do in order to preserve, right, to preserve the crop so it doesn't all die on him, he just spray it with high fructose corn syrup. How's that sound? That's what they do. And then even better, in the state of Indiana now, because glyphosate doesn't work anymore, now they use Agent Orange in order to spray the crop to kill the weeds because glyphosate doesn't work right? Now, do you know what that means? Do I need to translate in plain English, right? What that means is what you're eating every day. You're eating glyphosate, and you're eating herbicides, and pesticides, and hormones, and antibiotic. Every day, people do that, right? Every day. So, do not wonder why people are sick, 
why we have so much chronic illnesses is because unbeknown to a lot of people, right? People just think they're doing the right thing, but they just don't know. That's why I like to have people write down everything they eat, drink, or snack on because when you do it and I can see it, then I know how you think. Because oftentimes people are like, well, Dr. jean I don't eat any sugar. I'm like, well, write it down, right? So maybe you don't need any sugar. You don't eat like lollipops, and you think that's what sugar is, but if you just have pasta, pasta at, at every meal or you have cookies or you have crackers or you have bean chips or you have your popcorns, right? All those things, they just break down into sugar. What about if you eat your rice at every meal? That's sugar, right? So you have to understand what the sugar is because if you don't know where it's at, how are you going to do less of it, right? Because you just think you're like, I'm a rock star. I'm doing great. The average American eat about 150 pounds of sugar per year. Now, if people eat less, that means there's many people that eat a lot more. Right? 150 pounds, that's a lot of sugar. Would you agree? Your body needs about 50 grams per day. 50 grams per day. According to uh, uh, bread, Life Without Bread by those two German physician Lutz. Right? It says in there that your body needs about 50 grams of sugar per day. It doesn't matter if you eat Hershey cookies or if you have like, you know, honey or if you have maple syrup. Like 50 grams per day. That's what your body needs. Right? So let's say that you want to be like wild and you have 100 grams. Right? You just have double. But you only need 50 grams. After that, your body just turns it into fat. That's what the body does because you get only store 500 grams of, of carbs in your body. It's in your liver and it's in your muscles. After that, it turns into fat. And fat causes inflammation and inflammation causes chronic illnesses. Do you follow me? Yes or yes? Look at your neighbor and say, I get it, right? I get it, because right? I, I want you to get it. I want you to have revelation here, right? Ezekiel 4.9, it says, this is Ezekiel 4.9 bread. It says, we're going to have a vessel with wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, emmer, which is a type of wheat. We put them together, and then we're going to make bread. So when you go buy this bread there, it's like it doesn't last very long if you put it on the counter, right? It's going to get bad pretty quickly. Unless you keep it in the fridge, you put it in the freezer. Do you understand that? And it's more heavy. It costs more money because, you know, it's going to be better for you. Right? You could have a bunch of calorie, but there's no nutrient in it. Or you could have nutrient-dense food, so then you don't eat as much. Because when you eat real food, it just feeds back to your brain, tells your brain you're full, so you don't have to eat as much. Right? So some of you are like, oh, I can't afford that. And what I want to say back to you is you can't afford not to do it. Because when you start eating real food, you're not going to eat as much. But it's not going to be good, though. It's not going to taste good, right? Some of you will be like, ah, I don't like that. That doesn't taste good. And then my favorite line, that's my one-liner. Maybe you need to write it down. You don't eat for food. You eat for fuel. You don't eat for the taste, right? You don't eat for what it tastes like. You eat for the fuel, right? So you're like, oh, you're so boring, Dr. jean -Guy. I know. I am, right? That's okay, right? Ezekiel 47, it says, And on the banks of both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not, whatever that word is, right, wither. And uh, it says, Nor their fruit fell, but they will bear fresh fruit every month. It says fruit. It doesn't say cake, cookies, candies, ice cream, bread, rice, pasta. And then it says the water will flow from the sanctuary. The fruit will be food, and then their leaves for healing. That's what we see today in the herbal world, right? Herbs can, are being used for healing. Then it says, Jeremiah 38, I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. Yes, God wants you to be healthy. He wants that for all of you, right? First Timothy, it says, no longer drink only water, but use a little wine. This is for you to hear a little wino, right? You're like, oh, see, it says you should drink wine. Okay, well, you can have a little bit. You can have, but just put your lips on it and be done, all right? And if you were to drink wine, now that I want to just like that, another side note. Right? We don't want to spend much time on that because probably you shouldn't drink alcohol. Right? But let's say you drink some. Do you want to have a bottle of wine at $2? I mean, what kind of junk is that? It's full with sulfate. It's junk. It's like poison. You should never touch it. Why would you just ruin the whole thing? Right? It's just not have it. It's like it's not worth it. It's not even the good stuff. Now you're just talking to the guy that doesn't drink. I don't even know what the good stuff is. I'm just... I just know that a dollar bottle, it's not the good stuff, okay? I can't get, I, I'm just telling you. 
There he's laughing. I don't know why. Third John, it says, I pray that you may go well, right? You're going to be in good, in good health and your soul, right? Don't improve my diet. I had a carrot once, didn't do anything. And really, I just want to land on this here tonight. I want to land on this because this is important. I want to finish with this, that, this idea, this idea that you're going to do something once and you're supposed to be better. Everything that we do here, folks, is you're going to have to have a commitment, a commitment to your health, a commitment to your physical health, to your soul health, to your spirit health. It's a commitment. And there's two things that I have found over the period of 25 years that is the most important. Do you want me to share those two things that are the most important? Out of all of them in 25 years, the two things that are most important. Right? The success, your success of your failure on your health journey has everything to do with those two things that are the most important here, and I'm going to tell you my secret. Are you ready? This is not going to be on your QR code. Number one, your success will be directly linked to your accountability. Your success will be directly linked to your accountability. How many of you here at some point in time, you had some goals, you had all, you had good intention, but yet nothing happened? Am I the only one? Right? Would you agree that if you had somebody that loves you enough, that is your accountability partner? Right? So I have Barry here, and I, so let's say that I talk to Barry here like every Monday morning. I talk to him 5 a.m., right? And I tell him, I say like, hey, on my health journey here, I want to do blank, blank, and blank. And you have somebody that loves you enough that's going to keep you accountable for your journey that can love you back to health. Not for you to be perfect, not somebody that's going to condemn you, that's going to shame you, just somebody that's going to be there with you and say, hey, listen, you can't do this. We're going to do this together, right? Somebody that just like you can just tell them that, Hey, tomorrow morning, we're going to be meeting at the gym. How many of you here, if you had a meeting, somebody at the gym tomorrow morning at 6.30, how many of you here, that is likely the chances, right, that you would be there to meet them? How many of you, right? Because somebody's waiting for you. You're like, I just can't just mess that up. I can't just let them show up and I'm not going to be there, right? When you have somebody that keeps you accountable, that's going to be your accountability partner, and you see that in the scripture. I'm going to tell you in the scripture. Check this out. In the scripture, you have this, this uh, amazing friendship between David and Jonathan. This amazing friendship between Jonathan and David, right? People to keep himself accountable and to be there for each other, to, to just watch each other's back. So that was number one. Number two. Number two is to have a why that is big enough. Have a why that is big enough. Why? W-H-Y. Why? What is your why? If I ask any one of you here tonight, how many of you here would like to be healthier than you are now? Everybody wants to be healthier. But if I say to you, how many of you here are completely 100% committed to be healthier in the next 12 months? I'm not going to see as many hands going up. Because if the why is not big enough, you're not going to do it. Right? This is what I've noticed. Over 25 years, two things the most important is, number one, having accountability. Somebody's going to keep you accountable. It's either going to be a coach. It's either going to be your friend. It's either going to be somebody that you're going to tell them what you want to do, and you get, they're going to be there on this journey with you right, to get you out of the hole and then to take you to the promised land. And then you're going to have somebody that's going to be, that you're going to be writing down your why. What's your why? Why do you want to do that? Some of you here tonight, right, maybe your why is you want to be more productive some of you here, you really would like to get a raise at work, but you know, if you don't have your health, you can't do that. Some of you here, you want to be traveling the world. Some of you here, you want to get on your knees and play with your grandkids, but you can't do that right now. Some of you here, I mean, like every single day, you're just waiting for your next doctor's appointment and you don't want that anymore, right? Because God has more for you. If your why is not big enough and you don't write it down, right, it's going to be hard for you to get out, to get on this journey, especially if you have some kind of chronic illnesses. And what I mean by this is, you know, heart disease and cancer and diabetes and, you know, dementia and early dementia and neurodegenerative disease and gut problem and whatever, you know, health that, that you're in or lack of, 
if your why is not big enough, it's going to be really hard to just move this thing around, right? Those are the two things that were 25 years that I've seen most, most, the most, uh, most frequently. And when it comes down to your health, right, people can do whatever they want because that's their health, and I completely get that. But just imagine here for a minute that whatever problems that you have, right, whether you have high blood pressure or you have, you can see that your mind is not working as well as it used to, or maybe you've already been diagnosed with cancer, you've already been diagnosed with heart disease or diabetes or, you know, any of those chronic illnesses, and you don't do anything about it. What do you think is going to happen in the next six months, a year, two years? you think it's going to get better or worse? Right? Knowing that something could have been done, right? So you have a chance to get to your bucket list, whatever that might be for you. Right? Whatever that bucket list is for you. You have an opportunity to get to that bucket list if you get your help back. Right? And that's the reason why tonight that, you know, if you haven't, I know some of you, you're already on this journey, but, you know, I want to, I want to share with you this, our wellness breakthrough evaluation that we have, our nutritional, uh, you know, wellness evaluation that we do in our office, and this is your next step for you, right? You should just, like, jump in and just, like, okay, that's my next step. This is, I'm going to be taking action here. I'm going to be the person at the gym. I'm going to put my shorts on, and I'm going to go work out. Our nutritional wellness evaluation, what we do is we have people fill out this, this in-depth nutritional questionnaire that, you know, that relates to system in the body to see how those system breaks down as it relates to nutrition, and then what we do is we do this thing called the heart rate variability, which tells us how the organs are working on the inside. If you go in the medical literature and you go in Dr. Google, I know you guys don't go there, but let's just pretend you do, right? That was a joke. You're supposed to laugh, but that's okay, right? People go in Dr. Google for everything today. You know, they find everything on Google, and that must be the truth. So, but if you were to type in heart rate variability, there's hundreds of papers in the medical literature that talks about heart rate variability tells you how the organs are working on the inside. That's part of our, eva our evaluation. And we also do this thing called the body composition analysis, which tells us about people that are starting to develop low-grade inflammation. And then after that, we do the nutritional evaluation, and we use, some, uh, we use some kinesiology testing, which is muscle testing with acupuncture reflex, right, to find out if there's any areas of deficiencies or if there's any areas of toxicity. And then after that, we build a program for people that is specifically for them as we are also monitoring a person's diet, right, meaning what they're eating. And Dr. Jean-Guy is not about the food pyramid, just so you know. Dr. Jean-Guy is not about, you know, the standard American diet, just so you know, right? So if you go look that up, this is not what I'm about. I'm not into that, right? Because this is what's killing people every day. So I'm not into that. So a nutritional wellness evaluation, when people come to the office, right, the fee for that, usually it's $200, and this will take you all the way through our, uh, through our second visit, which is the report. which is really nothing. I was thinking about this today here. Uh, I've had three people last week telling me about their uh, appointments that they had had in the past uh, few years at the functional medicine doctor. The functional medicine doctor, in a sense, right, we do the same evaluation 99 plus percent of the time, the same evaluation. If you were to go to get a, a functional medical evaluation, right out of the gate, they'll charge you $2,000. And you haven't had any treatment yet. Right? Our first evaluation is $200. When people come in and we have our classes, right, I tell people, I'm like, listen, uh, if money is like a big thing to you, right, when you sign up for evaluation tonight, we do that for $75. And I always have one or two people that ask me in the, you know, they don't ask me or they just sit back and they're like, well, why would you do that, right? It's already pretty cheap. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess I could just give it to you. Yeah, we could do it for free, right? But we only have like 60 computers at the office, so when we've got to, sometimes we've got to replace them, right? But the reason why I do this for $75, which is really not a whole lot, is I want you to just, I want you to, I want to bring you back here. September 14, 1982, right? September 14, 1982. When my father left that day, Right? I never saw my dad again. My dad had a heart attack on his way to the hospital. Leaving behind him five kids, none of us were teenagers. Right? 
And I promised myself a long time ago that in my lifetime, doing what I do, right? That's one of the reasons why I'm in front of you today, right? If I have anything to say about it, that I will never let anybody that is in front of me at any given time, any one-on-one that I have for 25 years or what we have here tonight, if I have anything to say about it, that I will never let anybody go through the same thing as what we've been through as kids, all five of us, as what my mom went through, right? Because some of you here, you're not teenagers. You're not Dr. Jean-Guy when I was nine years old, right? But some of you here tonight, you have kids and you have grandkids. And if you were to spend the remaining five, ten years of your life at the nursing home, and not being able to hang out with them or not being able to spend time with your spouse or to travel with them, or maybe you just worked your entire life, but yet you cannot enjoy your retirement, what is that good for? Do you see what I'm saying? Right? And every one of you here, if I were to ask you, you know, what's your values and what's important to you, right? Every every one of you would have different values. But whatever it's important to you, would you agree that if you don't have your health, right, it's going to be harder for you to to be able to fulfill that. Would you agree with that? Right? The answer is yes, for sure. And that's the reason why, right, that I want to I wanna do this for you, right? Or if there's anybody that you know, love and care about, you know, they can also have, right, they can also tap into this, the ability to have this evaluation with, you know, either myself or, or, or other master nutritionists, right? So you know where you're at as where your health is and, and where you want to go and which direction that you're heading. Does that make sense? Right? So, um, did you guys learn anything tonight? Anything? Maybe one, two? Okay, good. Because if you didn't learn anything, I got to pay you. Right? So, I mean, I just usually don't ask at the beginning because it might cost me a lot of money. So, I just wait a little bit. Right? So, I just want to leave you with this here. What's going to happen is Gabrielle is going to be right in the back out the door. Right? If you're just ready to go, you can just like zoom out. You leave. You're done. And you're like, okay, Dr. Jean, you did a pretty good job. She warned me today, she's like, you're going to get in big trouble if you don't tell people about, like, we're going to have a dinner with the doc here in two weeks from now, it's on Monday, right? A dinner with the doc is, uh, we talk about, we talk about health, that's all I know, right? We have this thing called the paradigm of health, we talked about what health means, and uh, we uh, switch gear to, tonight you've heard about food, now we switch gear to movement. Right, so our dinner with the doc, we do that in two weeks. It's on Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. She told me to make sure that I don't screw that up, that I tell people. Right, so on your way out, I think she has those little flyers. So if you're interested, you can just sign up. Uh, There is no charge for it. We feed you. That's the most important part. You can bring your friends, right? So, uh, and then I order bread, and then I just watch just to see if you're going to have some, right? And then I judge you, right? Only for a split second. I'm just kidding, right? But I would love to have all of you and your friends. Uh, we've done this now for 20 plus years. So, uh, you know, that's the reason why uh, we, we just do this on a monthly basis. And this is really important to me, right? It's important to me that I want to change this community. I want to change our churches. I want to change this town. I want to change the state of Michigan. We have people flying from all over the state, from other country, right, to come and see us. And we just, we just love that. We just love the idea that we can have an effect on people's spirit, soul, and body. And we can truly just mentor people in all those areas. And that's the reason why we do what we do. And I'm just like so grateful and excited to just be in this place, you know, now for 20 years. And grateful that Pastor Kevin has, you know, continued this, this journey and support that, right? And to be able to see what's happening in this place. So uh, dinner with the doc, two weeks from now, 6.30 p.m. right here. You can bring your friends. You can just, you know, sign up. We have that. If you want to sign up for the nutritional evaluation, it's right there. Right? As soon as you walk out the door, right on the left side, they're going to be waiting for you. And then you're going to get all the scripture. If you just fill that out, you're going to get it. If you didn't fill it out, you won't. Right? We, uh, Pat made this all pretty. I didn't see it, but I know it's pretty. Right? I just know for sure it's pretty. So I'm leaving you here. I want to pray for you right before you leave. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm running out the door. You guys ready? Dr. Jean. Too bad they weren't here. <laughs> How can they sign up? Uh, I guess if you're online and you're watching, you'll have the opportunity to do that as well. Uh, but you'll have to contact our office and get in touch with Brandy. Right? You're going to write this down in the chat? Yes. Okay, she's writing this down. Okay, so I'm going to pray for you. Father God, thank you for um, having everyone here in this room tonight. Just want to say thank you for 
uh, allowing us to be here. And uh, we just want to say thank you for how amazing that you're, uh, you've made our body to work. And I just pray, Lord, that tonight, uh, whatever that was said here in this room, that if it's of you, it will stick. And if it's not, that it will just go right past the people that are here tonight, Lord. I just pray that all the seeds that were planted in their mind and hearts will grow if it has to, and that you will just uh, impress upon them uh, their next step of what the direction that they need to be heading. And I just pray, Lord, that you just continue uh, with every person here in this room. Do you continue to just move them on their health journey uh, so they can do greater work, that you can work through them and for them and within them, uh, ultimately to touch more people's lives. And you're just going to give them some fresh revelation as it relates to their health and the direction that they need to be taking in order to get to where they want to be and also to uh, surround them with people that have the wisdom uh, to be able to take them to the promised land. And I just pray, Lord, that you uh, give them some, uh, some supernatural wisdom and discernment uh, with the people that are around, the information that they get, uh, whether it's from the Internet, whether it's from the paper, whether it's from their, 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 their reading, or whatever that might be. And we just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for this amazing body that you've given me. Thank you for uh, those people that are here tonight. And I just pray, Lord, that you just continue to bless them. And uh, we just want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Okay, you're welcome.